Please welcome the author of The Politically Incorrect Guide to Darwinism, Jonathan Wells. Thank you. In the 1960s, I was a Berkeley leftist. In fact, I spent a year and a half in prison for my opposition to the war in Vietnam. So I love controversy, and I guess it's a good thing, isn't it? I'm now much older, and I hope wiser. In fact, I'm committed to conservative social values, and I think, like many of you in this room, opposed to big government. Unlike Mr. Shermer, however, I do not embrace Darwinism for the simple fact that it's false. Darwinism is not the same as evolution. Evolution can mean many things, uh, things like change over time or changes within existing species that are utterly uncontroversial. Nobody quarrels with them. By Darwinism, I mean specifically Charles Darwin's theory uh, in its original and modern forms that all living things are descended from a common ancestor modified by natural processes, unguided natural processes, such as random mutation and survival of the fittest. As I learned in the course of earning my PhD in biology at Berkeley, Darwinism is false because it doesn't fit the scientific evidence. This includes the evidence cited by Mr. Shermer in his book, Why Darwin Matters. For example, according to Mr. Shermer, and this is from page 16, fossils speak for themselves, and Darwin's theory of descent with modification is evident in eight intermediate fossil stages identified in the evolution of whales. Yet paleontologists now know that all of those fossils had features they would have had to lose in order to give birth to anything further on in the series. Those so-called transitional forms cannot possibly be members of a single lineage of ancestors and descendants. One might as well line up a series of automobile models to illustrate descent with modification. Indeed, some Darwinists have done this. But we all know that automobiles are designed, not products of unguided natural forces. So the point is that a series of forms does not in and of itself show us anything Darwinian at all. Darwinists acknowledge that living things look designed, but they claim that this is an illusion. Mr. Shermer uses the example of the human eye. Here's a quote from page 17 of his book. Biological structures show signs of natural design. The anatomy of the human eye, in fact, shows anything but intelligence in, the, in its design. It is built upside down and backwards, requiring photons of light to travel through the cornea, lens, aqueous fluid, blood vessels, uh, and various nerve cells before they reach the light sensitive rods and cones that transduce the light signal into neural impulses. This description is actually incorrect. Uh, the blood vessels are behind the light sensitive cones and rods. Otherwise, the blood vessels would block most of the incoming light. Indeed, this is the very reason the nerve cells have to be in front of the light sensing cells so the latter, the nerve cells, can be, uh, sorry, so the light-sensitive cells can be close to the underlying blood vessels that nourish and renew them. The human eye, in fact, is an extraordinarily efficient video camera that continually regenerates itself, unlike the cameras we make. And no one has succeeded in showing how it could have been designed any better, nor has anyone demonstrated how it evolved through a Darwinian process. 